there, folks. I'm Emily. And I'm Milt. And we haven't figured out the books in the middle of the room for our wall, in case anyone's wondering. And in case anyone has ideas, you are welcome to send them to our super secret P.O. box or by carrier pigeon or by carrier guinea pig, depending upon your preference, because some people do not like birds, and the guinea pigs and pigeons will just know how to get here, so you don't have to give them an address. If it's the P.O. box, just put Emily and Elt, and uh, we have a deal with the post office, so they'll know yeah. how to get it to us. Oh, also skywriting is permitted. But make sure you write, use skywriting code, because we don't want anybody else to see what you wrote. Yes, because we want this idea for our own. If it becomes very good, then we are happy to share some of the fame with you. We will put your name and we'll put one of those like plaque dedications on the bookshelf or whatever it is that you come up with, with your name. And we'll put one even on both sides so both Elt and I can see it. Um, but we do need help because neither one of us is an engineer, which I think one of us really should have become an engineer. That's really something we're lacking. Yeah. And because we don't trust too many people, we don't, we don't know an engineer yet. <laughs> right. I know so, of certain engineers, but I don't know that I would trust them to come, just, just come to the basement. I, mean, I would v- trust very few people in this basement. Yeah. Yeah. There was that one guy that one time who talked with us about Artemis Fowl. So he was kind of cool. And then there was that music guy that one time. So yes, there are a few people. You know, Emily would probably let Sutton Foster come to the basement just if she showed up. Okay, Sutton Foster literally doesn't count as a person. She's <laughs> like, whatever's above a person but not divine because only God is divine. You know, so like a superhuman. She's like a superhuman. Yes, yeah, so like a superman, except she's not because she's Sutton Foster. Yeah, so she's better. Yeah, and you know what? Speaking of trust... <laughs> <laughs> that's segue. Actually, this one it works because today we're talking about the music man or music oh. man, right? And that is about trust because you have the traveling salesman mm-hmm. who's who's coming to you know kind of like a conservative, very stiff Iowa town, and he's trying to sell them on this boys band, right? We're gonna have a boys band. Rivers is gonna have a boys band, and we're gonna have it today, right? <laughs> but there's no boys band because he's really a con artist. That eventually he falls in love um, with the whole town, and he does. At first, he's like trying to woo the librarian, Madam the, Marion, the librarian. He's he's wooing her just because, like, oh, if you could get you know, if you could get past Marion, then go get the whole town on your side. And then he does actually fall in love with her. Um, which, by the way, just as a side note, that song Marion, Madam Librarian, is a great song, and especially the way they do it on the film. I don't think I've actually ever seen a stage version of Music Man, but the way they do it in the film with the way the beat of the people walking and the books and the whatever is, is great. Yeah. And also you have um, Robert Preston, who was in the opening of it on stage in 1957 and then in the film version, which is a couple of years later. And this part was made for him. He's fantastic. They did a remake of the Music Man. We don't like talk 2000- about it. Yeah, we don't. That doesn't count. Just for never forget it. Forget it. Now, for our scales, violence zero is a 0.5. There's some beating upness happening, but I mean, it's one of these old time. It's it's an old, it's an old school um, musical, so it's pretty clean. Yeah, um, language is a zero as well. It should be. Romance is a one. I think there might be kiss. There's a little bit of romance, but it's not. I mean, it's not really anything. He just kind of admits that, like, oh, I wanted to run away from you guys, and then I realize, you know. I've come to care too much about you and Marion and everything, so I can. So, very clean as these things should be. And the costumes do not cause any pearl clutching unless you just love a dress, but not because you're horrified. Right. Or anything, anything anyone's wearing. Right. I, okay, so I also have not seen it on stage. I was in it when I was, mm-hmm. uh, like 10 or 11 or something. I was one of the, Members of the school board, I was J.C. Squires. Um, I've seen the movie a million times. It is probably my favorite musical. It's partially my favorite musical because I've seen it so many times, if that makes sense. I just watched it so much that I quote it and the songs are my favorite. I was actually going to venture out of the basement because 
this year, this fall, Music Man right. was supposed to be revived on Broadway with Hugh Jackman as um, Harold, Hill. Harold Hill and Sutton Foster as Marion right. the Librarian. And I was right. so excited. And I know that people have had to put up with real hardship because of COVID, but I would just like to posit that what I had to give up was worse than anyone else. Because <laughs> this is like everything I've ever... I mean, Hugh Jackman, I don't have particularly strong feelings about here or there, but Sutton Foster in The Music Man is like any better than anything I could have dreamed of. And it has been ripped away from me and... COVID and China have a lot of explaining to do. Yeah, thanks CCP, CCP virus. Thanks for nothing. Ugh. The Who had one job and they failed. <laughs> Sorry, just put that in there. But the musical itself, the movie is so... It's one of... Some musicals just don't translate as well onto film. This one is just as good as a movie, I think, as it is on stage, at least in my limited. I'm sure it's even better on stage, but it is, they do a lot of fun stuff like with, so with the song, um, Mary and the Librarian, and then there's the books opening and closing that go in time with the music and the opening song. It's a very quick patter song and the yeah. wheels of the train go in time to it. So they do That's a lot right. of this musical. One of the things about it, if you, Watch Golden Age musicals. And we've, Elton and I have sort of touched on this and some of the other things we've talked about. It's not, they're not necessarily deep. A lot of them are just about romance and they're in a way more about the costumes and the dance numbers and the music than they are about the story. But The Music Man seems very self aware. And the movie in particular, some of the little bit characters, they're not great singers. Like, they have really funny, weird voices. They're in character. And the musical just doesn't seem to take itself so seriously, which I think is great because it's like, look, we're doing a little romance about the small town in Iowa. And we're going to, by the way, break out in song and dance whenever we feel like it, <laughs> which is musicals are a hilarious concept. They're a little bit weird and unnatural, but the music man just accepts that and like this is what we're going to do and we're going to have fun with it and you're going to have fun along with us and we're going to have all you know this huge band and kids are going to know how to play their instruments magically and it's it's just fun it's super fun I think this is not this is not my favorite musical and i'm not just saying that to be a contrarian but there are a lot of great moments in it whenever he whenever the uh the the town's um like the people who are running the town come after him and he gets the, the, the barbershop, the, the barbershop quartet thing going. He's yes. distracting them with like a song. That's great. It's also because Robert Prestwood is so good. He this really, role was meant for him. He really brings like all the, he brings all the potential. He makes all the potential of this character happen because yes. the music man is the Harold Hill character. He has so much. First of all, he has so many words and dialogue and lyrics. It's just, oh my gosh. I don't know how anybody knows that part. The only <laughs> part that I've ever seen that's more than that is, Barnum from from the Barnum musical and that one is just he does not stop talking the entire musical but this one also it's Harold Hill makes the musical you have everything else that's also there would you give a lot of a lot of credit to Meredith Wilson right who wrote this who's by the way a guy which I never knew that he was a guy <laughs> but apparently he also has like a bazillion names so these are like two of his names and um, Emily had, had dug up that he wrote it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas and then sink Molly Brown it's been a lot of, songs, a lot of other stuff yeah, well, among other things, a lot of the songs are not like the pool song, which is such a you know famous song. It's not mm -hmm. like a singy song. It's more of like a, a beat, right? Like a uh, I want to call it a sing song because that's not what the beat is, but it's more like a sing song than an actual song. Yes, um, that one though has a, a bazillion lyrics to it, and the fact that anybody could and and he's a fast talker, Harold Hill, because that's part of him being a con man. Right. So anybody who could pull off that <laughs> that song and that part, so there, it's just a, it is a great character, and he does learn at the end, like maybe don't be a con man. <laughs> and so that there is that moment there. You also have the moment when like you expect Marion's going to turn on everyone when they do find out he's a con man and you know throw him out on his uh, 
on his rear end. And she's like, no, he gave everybody confidence. So that's kind of like an interesting perspective. Because like, mm-hmm. sure, he swindled everybody. But like, look at all the kids who thought they were going to the band. They walked around like they were someone, in, like they had confidence in themselves. They walked around like there was something important going on in their lives. Which is an, inter- it's, it's an interesting addition to have brought yeah. that in. Um, so yeah, there were... There are it, some very good moments in the musical. Like, even though, again, I know of a lot of people who love it and, and it's their favorite, but it, it's not exactly my favorite, but there are a lot, there's a lot of good stuff to it, I'd say. Yeah. It has, if you're looking for, I want to watch a musical and you're picturing in your mind, there's songs and there's dance and there's costumes, but there's also a little bit of a story and it's fun and it's good for your family. The Music Man hits all of those things. Songs that are hummable when you walk away from the show which i think is very important and and yeah there's some i don't think you need to watch it for the positive messages but i do think it is positive that he can change and that she can see the good in him because that's, well, she changes too in that regard that's she's true so stiff and rigid and he kind of he loosens her up but not to the point of like oh we're not gonna get drunk tonight which is kind of how they do things now like, right. oh, we got to loosen you up, so we got to get you drunk or high. And it's not like that. It's just I have to, we just, you just have to start allowing, like, can you find a different way of looking at things that doesn't compromise on you, but that just does open you up a little bit more, doesn't make you so rigid. Right. So there is that, which is also good. Yeah. She's also a little bit of a, in a way, a bullied character because everyone in the town spreads these awful rumors about her for being kind of slutty. Because of oh, yeah. the relationship, how'd she get the library? Right. How'd she get the library? Right. And then she reveals, I didn't, because it's it was this old man who left her the library. So everyone thinks, oh, she either she swindled him or you know it was something inappropriate. But she's like, this was my father's best friend, and he entrusted it to me because uh, I think a just because he loved our family or because we needed the money. But so she's also not had it so easy there which is probably part of the reason she's so uptight also by the way she is she for me is on the same level as Sutton Foster just the character of Mary the, the <laughs> actress so it's Shirley oh. Jones she oh. was in the movie version and she's also was in the movie version of Oklahoma and she mm-hmm. just has a gorgeous soprano voice which I will never be able like Marion the librarian is a role that I would love to play but I will never be able to play because I'm not a soprano and it breaks my heart a little bit but it's okay uh i sleep most nights even though i have this knowledge but i do like i don't know i just i guess because i grew up watching this movie but i just think i also have such a preference for old broadway singers as opposed to new broadway singers there is a difference in their voice it tends to be much clearer and they often didn't belt quite as high or quite as broadly or they belted a little bit differently but their voices were just it was just a more pure voice like a much more beautiful like Kristen Chenoweth soprano is something that I I know she has a great voice I don't I don't like it it's a very different type of soprano but Shirley Jones is so clear and pure and gorgeous and well that actually we yeah. didn't mention it but just to throw it in there which is kind of random Aaron Tavit from Moulin Rouge kind of has a voice like that it's not mm. exactly an old class it's like a new version it's like the new version the modern version of that kind of he has a very clear voice and he sings very clearly so whether or not you like his voice it's not overly deep or overly high even though he can hit a lot of crazy keys and stuff but he he has a very clear way of singing it, it's always nice to hear it like a clear, just just clean singing in that yeah, regard. It's just very nice clear, and when he and the lyrics are very clear when he says them. So good job. Yeah. But yeah, and then this one also part of it is that, um, like you have the kid with the lisp. So he tells you know Gary Indiana has no has Gary Indiana because right there's no lisp, there's no th or, or s or yeah. anything in there in Gary Indiana. So part of it also is that Harold Hill being, being the con man, instead of them just condemning him. So that kind of goes back to what we said. And, and, uh, Marin's like, no, look, you gave everybody confidence. That also shows like your fast talker 
and you've been using your, and he's charismatic, you know, you've been using your way with people in a negative way, but look at how your way with people can be used in a positive way. Like see how you lifted people up that you gave right. these kids confidence or you found like the kid who's always afraid to speak. And you're like, Hey, Gary and Deanne is a, is a, is our words that you don't have to be afraid of saying. So that's it. The stuff, the thing about the older musicals is that these message, I don't say the messages, but kind of these more su substantive points are not always as clear because sometimes they'll gloss it over a little bit or just the way it's kind of corny, the way they do it versus like there'll be a musical. Now there'll be so much more drama around these right. things. So which, you know, could be a preference or not. But when you do look for it, you do see, again, we got to cut through the haze and we got to thank people. <laughs> right. You got to think. But you do see that that's there. That's also a very good thing. It is, the musical is very positive, very upbeat, definitely fun. And they do find a way to give, you know, just because you've been, you, you've been, go it, they're basically saying you've got all these great things. You've just been misapplying them. So now. Yes. This was kind of your way, like, look, you can, you can apply them in the correct way, which kind of also gives you hope for the character of like, Hey, I see that I can be, I don't have to like, again, you know, not the change yourself, not change yourself thing, but I see that these things that are natural to me that I'm good at are things that can actually be used in a good way also versus like, no, we got to break you down and change you kind of thing. It's, it's more, you do need to change, but not because, not because you're, you know, not because your talents or whatever need to change, it's because you have to change the way you've been applying them. So that's that, good there's good stuff in that also. That and it's also like a positiveness there as well. Yes. So also, good job, Meredith Wilson. Yeah. Good job, Meredith Wilson. I learned last night when I was looking into it a little bit more that Meredith Wilson was born in Iowa, and the Music Man was sort of a like a love song and an homage to his hometown because. It's like he is the music man, not in the fact that he's a swindler, but in the fact that he he was a composer and he played at least the piccolo, but I think he might have played a variety of instruments. So this is sort of him bringing music to his hometown by way of a musical. And OK, follow me on this one. So he wrote the music man and then he and his wife did a musical about the making of the music man. And in some okay. adaptation of it on off Broadway, uh, the leads were I can't remember who the female was, but the male lead was Brian Darcy James. And what I know how Elt feels about Brian Darcy James, sort of the way that I feel what? about Sutton Foster. So I thought I should mention. Well, that. not entirely, but almost. <laughs> well, I so wait. Sorry. What is it called? Um, I'd have to look it up. You know, but, we're gonna have to go look it up. We have to, well, further research is required. So yes. while we're looking for our engineer for the for the wall for the book mm -hmm. wall, we're gonna have to look up further information is required in this regard as well. So I mean, we have to do two things at once, and also research on how to multitask. Even though I'm not really into multitasking, because I don't, I'm not really a big multitasker. But we have, we definitely have our work cut out for us. We do, which I guess means we should probably end this episode also because uh y'all should go watch this movie especially a lot of people have maybe been sad recently because of covid and being stuck at home uh this movie will make you happy and also because every time we say sudden foster emily remembers that she only wrote four letters to her today instead of 14 <gasps> so she's gonna have to go write the rest of those letters also oh my goodness you're so right okay thank you so much for listening bye bye everyone see you next time thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of oh my word we hope you enjoyed it if you did, make sure to subscribe and write a review, and please share the show with your friends. If you didn't like it, you can share the show with your enemies. Please also follow us on Instagram at oh my Word Podcast. There we post episode updates, our ratings for each book, and also our personal reading recommendations. Music for the show is by Tim Burke. Editor is Gabriel Yaffe. We'll see you next week.